Morning, everybody. I'm Lee Cronin, and as you can see, I'm a chemist, and I want to make some really bad drugs. That's my, that's a really bad joke. Um, so I think it's quite important that now, obviously, we're all knowing about machine learning, robotics, and uh, kind of uh, and and computation. I don't want to leave chemistry behind. And the problem with chemistry is the space of molecules is quite large. Like there's literally an infinite number of molecules to make, and it's all done by hand by poor chemists in the laboratory and robotics has kind of left us all behind. Um, and so one of the things I've been thinking about doing for a, for a decade now is trying to build a programming language for chemistry. Now this is one thing you can't use machine learning to do because when you hallucinate, the lab is on fire. So, and so what I try to do is build a kind of relationship to understand that chemistry is about a bit like mixing stuff, shaking stuff, cooling stuff down, purifying stuff, and doing it on repeat, and doing that as reliably as possible. So we kind of took this, this kind of abstraction, which is actually a physically embodied thing, and literally made a programming language for chemistry. Now, that has, that's interesting because we want to do things more reliably and all that stuff, but actually, if you have a programming language for something, you can represent and you make it Turing complete, then you can basically think about making any molecule you want on demand, not just imagining it, hence the title, you know, Do Computers, which is a chemical robot that does chemistry, dream of electric drugs. So what we did is we started to kind of take all the textbooks of organic chemistry. Someone today was telling me how they loved, rather hated organic chemistry because we were made to memorize everything. Now, rather than, <laughs> you're welcome, uh, you're, Rather than just memorizing it, we can produce programs to make these molecules. So those horrible kind of pieces of facts, those facts that you were made to remember, you can just explicitly encode. And that explicit encoding is really important if we're going to be able to invent new molecules and do it reproducibly. The kind of scandal right now is we're kind of blinded by numbers in computer science and information technology. But there's only less than 3,000 small molecule drugs on the market. So there's only 3,000 molecules in the history of humanity that have been invented by chemists and got into the clinic. And that's 200 years of chemistry. So something is a little bit wrong. So what I've been doing is building this programming language and then obviously instantiating it in a robot. And I don't know if the, the movies are all a bit labored today, but you can see the, the reaction occurring and then after the reaction, the separation automatically occurring, all this horrible chemistry you'd have to do by hand. And so if the kind of the Turing machine for chemistry requires reaction, extraction, okay, and then isolation and then purification, which is what you're seeing on the screen here, if you do those four things abstractly, practically, you can make any molecule on demand robotically forever. So it's kind of like a printing press for chemistry, but it also allows you to invent new chemistry this is a thing it self cleans. This is what my research team like a lot because you literally have to just uh, not worry about kind of making a mess. But of course, we can bring in um, the dreaming part. One of the big problems or one of the fascinating things about machine learning is that anyone can make anything up. But actually, uh, generative AI is only as good as the data you put into it. And so, what we've been trying to do is if you can encode chemical space, with an alphabet, you can write new stories that people can understand. And so the way you do that is you establish a design, you then generate the code almost randomly, like bits like uh, writing on a typewriter randomly, and then try and execute it. Now, if you did that for real, your lab would be on fire. So what you try and do is you then go through an imaginary space and you think about what might work, and then you select those designs that will work, and yes, we made a GPT for chemistry, but it's not on, it's not on language, it's on electron density. And electron density is what you put into proteins, you can then dream up new drugs, and that's literally what we've been doing. Um, and then, of course, if you can have these horrible robots in these big labs, can we make server farms of robots? Could you have one in your basement or in your kitchen? Well, here's my colleague building one. Again, the, the movie's a little bit slow, but you can see on the, on the left-hand side, um, she's building the robot um, over a few hours, and on the right-hand side is actually the finished article that I took to California a few weeks ago to, uh, to make an, a brain cancer drug um, on stage, which, which worked. And you can see the code in the background there in the graph, and so basically, that's computation. 
happy to talk to you about that and other mad things. And thanks for the opportunity to give this talk.